It's another day at Kapala Primary School, Chipangali District in Eastern Province of Zambia. A time check a few minutes before 7 a.m. But this day is not the same day as other days. Drums of joy are sounding. Something is cooking. It's so great to be back here in, in Zambia, um, experiencing another very warm welcome here. And it, it's, it's very moving. Through every land they see, for the importance of school feeding, we proclaim a foundation for a brighter tomorrow, we explain. This poem from Kapara, Daipara Para, Monga Nisoba, Dapara, is not for Mahara, but it has been performed after Damapara. Remember, remember our big OEM was in thy God as we feed. Together we say thank you. Kapara, Kapara Primary School. Uh, these were 400 pupils here when we began feeding here back in, in 2014. Today there's 1,400 pupils here. Uh, and it, it just moves me so much to see all these children here um, in class learning. And, and to think that so many of those uh, would be out of school without Mary's Meals. And then meeting the volunteers and just hearing them talk um, about their passion for education their desire that every child here might be educated. That's their motivation. That's why they're giving up their time every day um, to cook the, the pala, to serve it. Um, and, and it really just gives me new um, energy, new motivation to go back home to tell people uh, about the amazing work that's going on here um, through, through the team, through the volunteers, uh, and why it's so important that we keep going, uh, to, keep, to keep raising the funds um, so that we can keep going and that we can reach more children Nine years ago, the Mary's Mills school feeding program set foot in Zambia with only 18,000 learners. Kapara Primary School was among the first 25 schools on the program with only 400 learners. Today, the food has changed the narrative. The school has more than 1,400 learners. Currently, it is running from preschool to nine, with the total enrollment of 1,402 pupils. We have a feeding program, uh, which is run in three sessions. One for spare because children report in the morning, mid morning, and afternoon. And this feeding program is done by Mary's Mills. And the cooking is also done by the volunteers who are coming from various places. Uh, the enrollment of these learners has improved from the time the feeding program was introduced in the year 2014. After the introduction of the feeding program, the enrollment of these learners increased. As I mentioned, currently now we have 1,400 and and the attendance at this institution has improved compared to the way it was. Uh, all the dropout pupils that we found from the community have come back to school and they have been retained. Now, these volunteers have also appreciated the initiative of feeding program at this institution. Now, the cooking begins at 05 hours and they stop cooking at 18 hours. So when the cooking is done at 05 hours, 06 hours, we start serving something. We have noticed that uh, even in the performance levels of this, the, the, the pupils at this institution has also improved. Currently, we are at 71% for grade 7 and 82% at grade 9 level. Uh, the production unit is so effective at this institution because learners are involved up to the time they knock off at 16 hours. So far, we have the garden, we also have, uh, we have uh, gardens and we also have uh, the piggery, which is also running effectively. At Kapara, the atmospheric energies are positively electrifying. The volunteer cooks cannot hide their ecstatic mood 
as they show the Mary's Mills founder and global CEO Magnus McFarlane Barrow how they feed the learners. With global economic challenges affecting the underprivileged mostly, with hunger being one of such negative effects, especially among rural learners, Magnus reiterates the zeal of Mary's Mills' vision of embracing sustainable development goal number two, zero hunger by 2030. Well, today, uh, Mary's Mills is only in the eastern province, um, and we're very happy how quickly it's grown here in the eastern province. Um, one day it would be our dream to reach other parts of Zambia. We have no immediate plans uh, for that. All, all over the world um, there's so much need and so many communities asking uh, for Mary's Meals. Um, and meanwhile we're in, in difficult times in terms of the global economy, in terms of um, the ability of our donors to support this, uh, and also in terms of rising food costs. So right now we work very hard just to keep the promise uh, to, to the children that we're already feeding in our program here in the Eastern Province. For us, everything we do is in, in partnership with the local communities, the leadership in, in the schools, the, the Parent Teacher Association, and also uh, with the government. And our relationship with the government is very strong. We really appreciate that. Um, and, and we want to keep building that, that uh, relationship. Um, Mary's Meals is something that one day, you know, in the future, we hope there is no need for, that we are redundant because children can be fed in, within Zambia um, without, without our help from the outside. So it's, it's really important for us to keep uh, working with the government, talking to the government about the different ways that they can support this program also. Our, our vision for Mary's Meals globally is a very big one. Um, you know, we, we believe that that second SDG, uh, Zero Hunger, is possible. We live in a world which produces more than enough food for all of us to eat well. So we believe passionately it should be possible that, that every child in this world uh, has the possibility to eat a meal every day in their place of education. So that's the vision that the, the Mary's Meals family uh, walks towards. Uh, every day um, and, and you know it's a wonderful thing that today globally uh, we're feeding over 2.4 million children around the world uh, each school day um, but in some ways you know our, our hope our prayer would be that that's only a beginning because there are so many more millions of children who are still waiting. Country director for Mary's Mills in Zambia Ipanji Kajani drives home the key message on why the school feeding program takes keen interest for the younger learners. Mary's Mills wants to support education outcomes and the, uh, the government of the Republic of Zambia also has got a school health and nutrition program and the school feeding part focuses on basic education and as you know basic education is ECD to uh, grade 7 so that's where we are focusing so that we can uh, motivate the children who would ordinarily be at home because of hunger to come to school and if they come to school the assumption is teachers are there teaching and learning materials are there and they would get an education we have learned that uh, number one the enrollment in individual schools goes up when there is a school feeding program especially when it's just starting the enrollment is quite uh, big you see bigger uh, ECD classes now even children that are just under three uh, are rushed to school because uh, the parents are sure that uh, they have at least a couple of college there so the impact has been huge
It's past midday. Though the sun is smiling right on top of everyone's head, Magnus can't leave Kapara without talking to the little ones. So, uh, good morning, all of you. It's... Good morning, sir. It's so nice to, to be here at your school. Shortly afterwards, Magnus is at Maguero School of the Deaf, another school where the Mary's Mule's porridge is served. To keep managing feeding learners here, the school keeps pigs, goats, and has a blossoming vegetable garden. Magnus seems to be curious with this particular thing here. <laughs> Exhaustion seems to have gone abroad. The tales told are loud and clear, feeding more than 400,000 learners in 752 schools in 11 districts of Eastern Province. Kapala Primary School and Maguero School of the Deaf show us how little acts of kindness are never little drops of water in an ocean. For one drop at a time fills a bucket with water. Felicity Reed, the Global Director for Communications at Mary's Mills International, has the exact thoughts on this. Uh, one of the things that's been hugely impressive is how Mary's Meals attracts people uh, to come to school. So the school in Kapata that we've been visiting uh, originally had a role of 400 learners, now has more than 1,400 learners, and they have to have three shifts during the day, starting at 7 a.m., 10 a.m., and at 1,300 hours, in order to be able to cater for all the learners. And that's just because Mary's Meals is there serving food. We've also been here at the Maguera School for the Deaf, where Mary's Meals plays an enormously important role within the lives of young deaf children. Government budgets are very, very tight, so there is very little here uh, for the children in terms of uh, um, lots of food or lots of facilities, but Mary's Meals providing a meal during break time gives deaf children the energy to be able to concentrate for their rest of their lessons. We've learned that deaf children, because they use sign language all the time, use more energy and get tired more quickly. So with the benefit of our program, they have the energy to apply themselves to their lessons. And here they're able to get a good education, which means they'll be able to uh, live independent lives in the future. So the role of Mary's Meals work is hugely valuable.